Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Here at the Cryptopolitan, your one-stop shop for all news when it comes to cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. I am your host, Satoshi Sean. Glad you're here. Glad to be back. I was kind of sick for a while. Um, no COVID. Well, I don't know. I didn't get tested, so. And I had some breathing stuff, so it could have been, but probably not. Um, if it's your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. We usually try to get uh, news reports out to you uh, every day, as well as coin analysis, which I'll be getting one of those up today as well. Um, no matter what, if you're a new subscriber or old subscriber, uh, please crush the like button. It really helps us out with YouTube's algorithm. With that said, let's jump into the news. Um, this, I think, is really huge. Uh, it's just really showing the importance of blockchain and the, uh, the evolution um, of where we're at using blockchain. A journalist broke the Chinese COVID-19 ban by using the Ethereum blockchain. Um, she put a story on uh, the Ethereum uh, blockchain is able to get it out and it's, you know, it's immutable, it's saved, it's there. Um, it's the com uh, complete uh, censorship by the Chinese government on all COVID-19 related content. A journalist um, for the South China Morning Post, Sarah Zhang, you know, uh, props to Sarah Zhang, uh, is claiming to have published an interview of a doctor about the coronavirus within the Ethereum network. Um, so all of his uh, tweets and all of his words are posted on the internet um, thanks to the utilization of Ethereum blockchain. They'll be able to store and save its contents in the network. That's that's amazing. Um, I know it's uh, uh, very heroic. You know, it's uh, they're, they're faced a lot of since the beginning of this. Um, the Chinese government has been really hard on doctors and journalists that are trying to talk about it. This eh, kind of back and forth about this thing. Uh, crypto adoption is set back almost two years from what Novogratz is saying. And then there's a lot of other people that are saying it's going to, you know, push it further ahead with, uh, with everything that's happening with COVID-19. Now, um, Novogratz did an interview with uh, Tony P. or Anthony Pompliano, um, which is weird because these dudes are both such massive, massive crypt, uh, Bitcoin bulls. Um, to, to hear them talking this way is, is just odd. It's like seeing dogs and cats hanging out together playing. Um so no regrets think this has pushed uh, adoption back like two years. I'm kind of more in the camp that it uh, it really shows people the need for it, um, especially with the with if you, if you watch Pompliano stuff, he's very 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 worried about the uh, government intrusion and um, the uh, the overreach and the the crushing of the Bill of Rights and and our our laws, especially in the United States with it. Um, because in the United States, we actually have those laws written and they're not supposed to be broken and they're breaking them without any real consequence, it seems. Um, so that does show the importance uh, of cryptocurrency, but I think it's shown the world the importance of digital currency. So taking that step, I think it's going to, uh, to propel crypto uh, a little bit quicker into mainstream adoption. Um, Hawaii introduces a digital currency sandbox which a, a lot of other countries have done that. Um, Zimbabwe uh, and a couple others. But uh, the Hawaii launched this to partner with uh, and bring in digital shopping, digital entertainment, digital currencies. Um, like I said, I think all digital currencies are really being pushed to the forefront as an immediate necessity, which I think when people think of people that don't know the difference between digital and cryptocurrencies, they're going to, they're just going to start getting into Bitcoin. And once they do, you know, it's game over. In in India, story never ends. Uh, crypto firms legal status is exposed by the, uh, one of the ministers there. Basically there's just a lot of scams going on, um, which is making it look bad for the space, entire space in, in, in India. Um, so they're they're launching a big uh, investigation to uh, to to find out uh, if if the ban was was a good idea. Um, only two Bitcoin and crypto trading firms have registered, which I mean that's what they really need to put out. And if people want to you know uh, make sure that they invest safely, they should just use those two firms. That's what the market does. That's the market pushing itself 
and policing itself. So if you don't get registered, you're not going to get any uh, any customers or clients. Um, but I mean, we're going to follow India because it's always interesting. That's about it for today. Like I said, I'll be getting up a coin analysis. Um, I think I'm going to do it on Ethereum today because I think Ethereum is going to be a really, really big mover in the next month or two. Um, I'm still Sean. It was good hanging out with you. Y'all take care. I'll see you in the next video.